Maya Manny, costume designer for Batwoman, Jennifer Moeller, costume designer for Dickinson, Annalisa McGordy, costume designer for Pose, Rita McGee and Alita Bailey, costume designers for P Valley, and Jacqueline DiMatteo, costume designers, a costume designer, excuse me, for Younger. Uh, thank you guys so much. I hear at the group panel, I wanted to start, I guess, for you guys, what was the motivating factor or something that inspired you to get into costume design in the first place? I, I'd love to hear. And, and Maya, maybe we could start with you and we'll go around. Oh, um, okay. So this is actually embarrassing. I went to see a movie, which when I watch it now is brilliant. And it was Lenny Del Nero, Marion, which I believe uh, had a lot of Chanel in it. But at the mm. time I was 17 and I thought, hey, you know, I don't see anything impressive. Like, what was I thinking? Um, and my friend said, if you think you're so good, why don't you try it? And being young and not very smart in that case, um, I went, fine. And I worked on some low budget movie for seven days a week for 500 bucks a week and have never been happier. So that and I uh, inflicted designs on my dog. So. <laughs> Jennifer, how about you? What was like a motivating factor for you to get into costume design? Um, well, I started off as a, um, a painter and sculptor first and studied fine art in school. Um, and I, I just found those um, days in the studio pretty lonely. It was really looking for a community to, to collaborate with. And then I kind of fell into theater to start. Um, and I really enjoyed collaborating with the other designers and having a text to start with and uh, playwrights and and then sort of fell into costume design after that. Yeah, Anna Lucia, how about yourself? Uh, I was also a painting major, but I didn't finish. <laughs> uh, but I was also in a lot of punk rock bands and punk rock kid and we did a lot of our own stuff and our own clothes. Um, and then, you know, I always loved film and movies and I think there was a point where I was like, Oh, this is an actual career, not just something you can admire and have, you can have health insurance. And um, I started out as a PA and I just worked my way up for the last 15 years. So, kind of and Rita and, and, and Alita, how about you guys? Uh, what was your motivating factor maybe for getting into this? Rita, you want to go my first? My motivating then, uh, factor, yeah. um, I grew, growing up overseas in Guam, it, it was island life, beautiful life. and one season, mm -hmm. I'm clothes, and I was fascinated with the changing of clothes and the story it would tell. And so I saw when I went to college in the states, I saw um, Spike Lee. She got it. She's got to have it. And I was fascinated, and I sent my resume to Ruthie Carter, Oscar winner, and I started as a PA working with her. And <laughs> love it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Alina, how about you? Yes. Um, I could definitely say I got into costume design because my sister, Rita, um, I um, always loved fashion and watching movies and dance. And I used to sew and Elle magazine and Vogue magazine and Mahogany and all of those things. So Rita was doing um, costume design and then we would do uh, styling for music videos. So it just was the progression of that world. Our world's colliding. So. Yeah. So grateful. Great. And, and Jacqueline, the rap, last but not least, how about yourself? <laughs> um, I had a fashion background. So I started, I mean, I went to school at FIT for fashion, but I was a personal shopper at Barney's for a number of years. And I then was doing fashion styling outside of Barney's. Um, so I was, I never really thought I was going to get into costume design. It was more fashion styling. And then Patricia Field, who I am is a dear friend of mine, and she was a client of mine at Barney's, asked me to join her team on the first Sex in the City movie. And then I told her, I don't know how to do production. I've never done it. I just, you know, she was like, you'll be fine. And I was, <laughs> and then how I got into it. That's wild. I guess um, for you guys, like what would, what's something a, a common misconception maybe about costume design that people have, or people don't realize about the, the craft, um, you know, like that somebody was like, just walking down the street and asking, like, I guess like, what do, what do you think? Again, Jennifer, we'll start with you on this one and I'll go around. But uh, yeah, what do you think? I think my, my fellow costume here will probably understand this, but I get a lot of questions with Dickinson about where I get the clothes, 
where I shop the clothes or what labels I use for Dickinson. And it always makes me laugh because there's not like an 18, 50 section at Saks that I go to. Um, all the principal clothes are are, um, are custom made and, and all the background stuff comes from Europe. And um, so I think that there's this idea that we just can get these things easily. And there's a lot, a lot that goes into um, putting things together, no matter if it's a period show or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maya, what, do you, what would you say to that? I would say that, um, Sometimes people think that just because they get dressed in the morning, that they actually know something. And I think the story that people, that costume designers tell with the clothes and clothes as to the mood of the character and the setting of this character. And uh, sometimes the clothing will tell something about the character even before they've even opened up their mouth. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. It's all part of who said it on this panel? The rectangle. It's oh, Ana Lucia said it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, that's so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rita and Alina, how about you guys? What, what's a common uh, misconception maybe about the costume design world that you would hear? That, that everything fits automatically right away. <laughs> 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 that they walk no. in, it fits one fitting, one change, and you work short hours. Yeah, <laughs> or that we're just shopping and it's just so easy and it's like, no, we're storytelling. Like, and if you have to shop something, you're looking for something that could not, might not even be in season or, you know, it's just so mm -hmm. detailed that we are telling a story and then script and production and closets and continuity. Like, I think people, you know, some that they don't know that particular world of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, everything all the way said. <laughs> all yeah. That. Jacqueline, anything else to add? Yeah, I mean, I think all those points that the ladies mentioned for sure. I think everybody thinks that our job is so glamorous. You yeah. know, we're celebrities and, you know, we're just kind of hanging around with our gown on with our cigarette and like, you know, like it's not, it's, it's not all that. You know, it's, yeah. you know, it's a lot of work, a lot of physical mm -hmm. work too, which I don't yeah. think people realize. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I guess, yeah, before we wrap up, I wanted to ask too, like, obviously, like, I think people, like, the audience is a lot more, uh, maybe nowadays aware of, like, the costumes and stuff, and I'm sure you like, you know, like, for Batwoman, you're going to get, like, people cosplaying, and, you know, like, uh, but for P-Valley and Younger, I'm sure people are, like, trying to, like, source these looks, and even Dickinson, like you were saying, Jennifer, like, oh, maybe people are, like, into this, like, you know, a lot of the, the dresses you're you're putting together are, like, you know, could be used like now for if, if people went to fancy occasions still, maybe they will in, in a few months, right? Like not not this present time, but maybe like like later this year. Uh, I guess, can you talk about that and like how rewarding that is to know that like the audience is so, you know, affected by the, the, the choices that you're making and like the work that you're putting in to want to like replicate those looks themselves. I, I, I guess, can, Rita, do you want, I would love to start with you and then we can go around to the rest of you guys, yeah. It was so awesome for us because our show premiered during during COVID. Or yeah, during COVID, and it was July it premiered, mm -hmm. and yeah. in October, people mm -hmm. already had costumes for Halloween. They had Uncle Clifford. They had Mercedes. They had all the characters. And then you go online. They had Instagram accounts. They had music videos that they did. I mean, it yeah. was awesome. So almost mm -hmm. half of the characters, they did um, they did costumes for Halloween. It yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. What a blessing. And yeah. it was just a, a confirmation of listening to our creator, Katori Hall, and, and listening to our actors and making it work for the body. Yeah. So yeah, there's cost Halloween costumes. <laughs> yeah, they sent this. They're like, where did where did um Uncle Clifford his Acabellum look? The wind gone gone. I was like, oh, we, we designed it, we made it, and and then they DM'd us and they did the whole thing. I was like, you have to get the lace and the head to toe with the shorts and the boots. I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Really cool. Jacqueline, do you want to? I'd love to like for you. I feel like younger people are like people want to replicate those looks. Yeah, like what do you, what do you what do you what have you seen? Or, or? They are. I mean, an episode streams, and I'm saying that maybe 20 minutes later, every look is online. 
and the designers and exactly where, I mean, things that I would never think they would even figure out. Someone mm -hmm. figures out who designed it and, you know, mm -hmm. like what the accessory was down to the earring and the necklace. Like, it's crazy. Or I get a lot of DMs from people asking me constantly, like, who made this? Who, you know, what was Hillary wearing? You know, um, someone wanted to wear this Givenchy gown that she wore to the Emmys. They asked if they could buy it from me. I was like, <laughs> I don't have that dress. It's in a box somewhere in a <laughs> at the studio. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they're all over the wardrobe immediately, yeah. especially uh, obviously now with social media. It's just instant, you know. Yeah. Jennifer, how about you? I mean, like I said, like, I think Dickinson, like some of the, like, the I'm thinking like the opera, I could see, like you're saying the the blue dress that you have um, Haley in is just incredible and stuff like that. I mean, have you noticed that people like reach out to you or like, like Jacqueline was saying, like DM you or whatever for, for some Flash of these the, outfits? Um, the chemises, which everyone thinks is a nap dress, especially with COVID happening, um, people staying at home, they all want to know where they can buy these nap dresses that Emily wears. Um, you know, those are antiques. So yeah. I can you know, look on Etsy. Um, but it's basically, you know, as, as um, everyone's been saying, you know, there's such attention paid to detail uh, and the work is really hard. So it's, it, it really makes you feel great when those little details are noticed and appreciated and it doesn't, it feels like it's not for want to all the work. Yeah. And Maya, for you, I mean, obviously like we were saying, like Batwoman, I'm sure people are going to be cosplaying as Batwoman for a long time, but I guess, can you talk about like, you know, like what you've heard or, or seen or any kind of like how that feels, I guess. I, I think the best for me was having a little girl show up dressed like that one. And I, the fact that we have a woman of color being a superhero and now little girls can see themselves represented, I say bravo. Yes. Bring on the capes, man. Bring on the capes. <laughs> and I also love uh. the fact that it, they, she isn't overly sexualized. She can kick your ass. And still, Leslie. Mm -hmm really can kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's great. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for news. Maya Manny, costume designer for, for Batwoman. Uh, Jennifer Muller, costume designer for Dickinson. Uh, Anna Lucy McCordy, costume designer for Pose. Uh, Rudy McGee and Alina Bailey, costume designers for P-Valley. And Jacqueline DiMatteo, costume designer for Younger. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you doing this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye.